Meet John and Fatima. They are aid workers like you, who have just started working for a humanitarian organization. Everyone who works with a humanitarian organization is an aid worker. Even volunteers, short-term staff, and contractors. The most important part of their job is to make sure they do no harm to the communities they serve. The people in this community have been affected by disaster or conflict. Some people, like women, children, and people living with disabilities, may be more at risk of experiencing abuse or harm than others. John and Fatima must treat everyone in the community with respect. Aid workers must not take advantage of the communities they support. If they do, they will harm individuals. They may destroy their relationship with the community, and they may lose their jobs. So what are some things John and Fatima should be aware of? Aid workers like John and Fatima are in positions of power. As a program officer from a different part of the country, John holds power because of his age, wealth, expertise, position, and gender. As a community mobilizer from the local community, Fatima also has power. The community sees her leading activities, working closely with other aid workers, and sharing information about resources and services. Whether true or not, community members believe that aid workers control access to resources and services. In contrast, community members often have little control over access to those things. Because of this, people may feel they cannot say no to anything John and Fatima ask of them. They might be afraid that if they say no, they or their families will not receive aid. John and Fatima must consider the power that people think they have. They must never abuse their power. Aid workers can abuse their power in many ways. One of the most harmful ways is through sexual exploitation and abuse. Sexual exploitation is when a person convinces someone with less power to participate in sexual activities. For example, if an aid worker offers extra rations or money in exchange for sex, that can be sex even without physical contact. For example, online or by text message. Sexual abuse happens when a person forces someone with less power participate in sexual activities against their will. For example, if an aid worker forces someone to kiss them or participate in sexual activities with them. To help guide aid workers like you, John, and Fatima, and keep vulnerable communities safe, there are a few important principles that all aid workers must follow. Aid workers must always treat the community with respect, both during and outside working hours. Sexual exploitation and abuse threatens the dignity of people that aid workers are supposed to assist and protect. Aid workers are not allowed to have sexual relationships with anyone under the age of 18, even if it is legal in the country. Not knowing the person's age is not a valid excuse. Aid workers are not allowed to pay for sex. They also cannot exchange employment, goods, or services for sex, or even suggest it. Aid workers are not allowed to have sexual relations with anyone receiving assistance. Even if that person is willing, if any of these principles are broken, humanitarian workers can be disciplined and even lose their job. In many countries, they may also face criminal prosecution. 
What happens if John or Fatima or anyone in the community sees or suspects any sexual exploitation or abuse by another aid worker? They must report any possible or actual exploitation or abuse they have seen or heard about. They should never investigate it themselves. It is someone else's job to find out what really happened. If aid workers like John and Fatima are scared to report, they can report it anonymously through their organization's sexual exploitation and abuse focal point or reporting mechanism. To keep that information confidential, they should not discuss it with anyone else. All aid organizations should have a clear and easy way for people to share their concerns. We want all people to be and feel safe and protected from harm. Sexual exploitation and abuse takes advantage of vulnerable people. All of us must prevent sexual exploitation and abuse. Everything that John and Fatima have learned in this video applies to you in your role too. If you have any questions about this training, please contact the Sexual Exploitation and Abuse or Safeguarding Focal Person in your organization. Or you can speak to your manager, protection, gender-based violence, or other technical lead.